I feel the need. The need for speed. Detroit is the center of America's motor industry, and today it hosts the ninth annual ITT Automotive Grand Prix. Paul Tracy leads the championship after three wins on the ovals, but a neck problem has caused his last-minute withdrawal from today's race. That means an opportunity for Michael Andretti to close the 24-point gap to the top of the table on the track where he's won twice before, including last year. He starts sixth. It's also a chance for Alex Zanardi to put a disappointing Milwaukee race behind him. He starts from the second row today. He was fastest in the warm-up. And Greg Moore comes to Detroit on a high from his debut success in Milwaukee. Now up to fourth in the championship, the 22-year-old is in great form and starts seventh. The situation all set up for this eighth round of the championship. The beautiful weather conditions here on the Belle Isle in Detroit. We're just across the river from Canada, from Ontario. A very warm welcome from Ben Edwards and Jeremy Shaw as we look forward to another street race in the championship. The scene down in the pits as the cars get ready for the start of this 77 lap event and the weather conditions certainly very much better than they were last year. The pole sitter is Gilles de Ferran after a superb effort in qualifying that saw him do just three flying laps but that was all that he required to take his second pole position of the year. The championship sees Paul Tracy at the top of the table by 24 points from Michael Andretti. Alex Zanardi third, Greg Moore in fourth place after that win last weekend, and Scott Pruitt, another winner this year, in fifth. Further down the order, Alonso Jr. way down there in tenth position in the championship after a lot of bad luck, and that included yesterday when he had problems. But the big story as we go into this race is the winner of the Detroit race in 1994. And the leader of the championship, Paul Tracy, is unable to compete in today's event. He's won three races in a row on the ovals so far this season, including a dramatic last gasp victory in St. Louis. But the neck problems that hampered him in qualifying yesterday have meant that he's unable to race today. He will have to sit on the sidelines and watch What's going on as somebody else gets closer to him in the championship table? He'll not be starting from where he should be on row six of today's grid. And that'll mean a gap alongside Bobby Rahal. But Greg Moore, the winner of last weekend's race in Milwaukee, is certainly in great form. Looking back to Paul Tracy here, who won that, uh, once again, won that 1994 race. But the other Canadian, Greg Moore, he was the one who was successful last weekend. A fantastic victory in the closing laps when everybody thought that he was going to be running out of fuel. And finally, he managed to get to the chequered flag safely. Michael Andretti, a winner here on two previous occasions. He'll be starting from the third row of the grid alongside Scotland's Dario Franchitti. His first win came quite a few years ago now. He was a four times pole position sitter in the first four years that this race was held and there a great view of the bell isle park and a look at the resurfacing work that's been going on you can see the scrape marks that the machines have left on the track and there's what we've been talking about in qualifying as if it's been finely combed and this surface is what is going to cause problems to the tires as we go through today's race it's a bit like a cheese grater as we mentioned jeremy and that is what the teams are worried about they are indeed. Tire wear are going to be very, very crucial. There is Carl House going through his traditional pre-race ritual. Uh, a prayer there for the car and the driver. And uh, Carl hopes that everything stays in one piece on that car uh, this afternoon. And as you say, Ben, tires will be crucial here. Most people are starting on the uh, more conservative of the tires. That's both Goodyear and Firestone. But some of the Goodyear people in particular are starting on the softer tire. And uh, that, that's going to be a little bit of a concern. Uh, Gilles de Ferran starts at the front of the grid. It is difficult to pass on this racetrack, so he'll be hoping just to keep ahead of the opposition till they get to the first round of pit stops. There is Dario Franchitti, fifth on the grid, but Gilles de Ferran hoping to get through to the first stop, then put on the more conservative tyres and go on from there. 
There is Roger Penske down in the pit lane, and of course the big story of this race so far, <laughs> before we even get underway, is that Paul Tracy has had to withdraw. Now I know you had a, a little chat with Roger Penske before you came over. Yeah, just as I came across here, he was uh, in the pit area there explaining that Paul Tracy's had these sort of muscle spasms, neck spasms all weekend. They think it's some sort of a virus, but they're not really too sure. The, the Dr. Olvey, Dr. Steve Olvey, evaluated Paul Tracy both last night and again this morning. He was on an IV drip, he was uh, prescribed plenty of rest. He did drive the car fairly briefly in the warm-up this morning, but again, he was having problems. He's tending to black yeah. out and under braking. That's just, just, just way too dangerous. He wanted to carry on. Roger Penske said, no, not this weekend. Gentlemen, start your engines! Hey. So, traditional starting call, and the engines fire up down there in the pit lane, and there's uh, 20... 27 cars as it is now with no Paul Tracy on the grid far up the absolutely fantastic weather conditions perfect for today's race a big difference to last year's race which started in wet conditions there's also a tremendous crowd here today and Detroit has absolutely come alive this weekend it's hosted a fantastic hockey match last night but now we're getting into what should hopefully be a fantastic race Gilles de Ferran then and Scott Pruitt sharing the front row Scott Pruitt winner in Surfers Paradise earlier this year but don't forget Gilles de Ferran's pace in Long Beach they've both had great performances on street tracks Roberto Moreno will be starting probably his last race for Newman Haas here this weekend. Christian Fittipaldi will be taking over the car. Alex Zanardi will be starting on the second row as well. He won at Long Beach, remember. Fantastic performance from Dario Franchitti. His best qualifying of the year so far, putting him ahead of Michael Andretti, who looks to try and close that points gap on Paul Tracy. Greg Moore and Maurizio Gutemann line up together on the fourth row of the grid and more on a high after that win last weekend. Maurizio Gutemann matching his worst qualifying performance of the year. Still pretty good. Brian Herter and Mark Blundell sharing row five of the grid. Watch out for Mark today. He had his best result of the year, matched it here last year with a fifth place. Bobby Rahal are not alongside Paul Tracy with Tracy out of the race. Bobby Rahal already a winner at this track. That was back in 92. Jimmy Vassa looking to try and tie up the consecutive finish record, in fact, matched the record at 25 here today. Raul Bazell, he's had two runner-up finishes here in Detroit in the past. Parker Johnston, his best finish this year came on another street track. That was Long Beach. Al Anser Jr. has never won this race in Detroit, but from the row eight, it's going to be hard to do it this year. Richie Hearn and Andre Ribeiro make it an all Lola ninth row to the grid. Richie Hearn doing another fine performance, the youngster in his car. Patrick Carpentier has been disappointing. The rookie driver who's battling with Frank Kitty in the rookie honours this year, he lines up alongside the Italian who put in a good effort in the Toyota-powered Reynard Max Pappis. Christian Danner returns to Indy cars this weekend in a surprise move, replacing Paul Jasper, and Gualta Sales lines up alongside him, the Brazilian in the Davis Racing car. Juan Fangio and PJ Jones once again share a row, as they did last weekend. This time it's the 12th row, and they scored the first points for Toyota here last year with PJ Jones driving. Adrian Fernandez had a disappointing weekend so far, so he's back on row 13, and alongside him is the young Mexican, Michel Jourdain. And then the last two on the grid are second German, Arndt Myers, the first time that two Germans have ever started a PPG kart race, and Hiro Matsushita joins him on the final row of the grid. So that's the lineup for the start of this race as Gilles de Ferran leads round behind the pace car. We'll take a quick break and return for the start. At Detroit here with the Belle Isle Park, absolutely fabulous in the sunshine. And this is a, a thousand acre park. We're looking at one end of it, really, which is where the racetrack is. It extends quite a lot in the background. There's a zoo here. There's all sorts of fun and games that you can do here over the weekend. Yeah, there's a major yacht club there. In fact, in, in between the yacht club and uh, Detroit proper, so to speak, there was a uh, hydroplane race last weekend, I think. It, it was, uh, well, it was supposed to be wet for the hydroplanes, of course, but it was heavy, heavy rain all weekend there. So we're jolly lucky this weekend. I know before I came up here on Thursday, they were predicting three days of rain here. By Friday morning, morning that had changed to three days of sunshine we, let's go with the sunshine shall we yeah let's hope so let's look at the track there you can see that it's tight and twisty like most street tracks but uh, there are a few passing areas it is possible if you're brave but you have to be brave committed and you need a bit of cooperation from the others around you turns one and two are actually quite fast they're taking those in fourth gear dropping down to third for turn three then some second gear stuff through a little complex of corners then through turn seven they're onto the longest straight but it's difficult to overtake into turn eight because of the way that the the road curves just at the wrong moment really jeremy they're looking to change the track for next year and hopefully that will then make overtaking a little bit more possible yeah they've actually been talking about that 
that for a couple of years now. We were watching the cars go through turns one and two there, over that little bridge there, bit of a bump there. The cars tend to go sideways, and there is turn three as it stands now. Next year, they'll go straight along there at the top of the screen, and they go on for about another ooh, good quarter mile or so, and then there's going to be a very tight right-hander. So that was nice and wide, that, that avenue there between the trees. There'll then be a tight right-hander at the end. That should be really good for overtaking. That'll transform this racetrack, I believe. Yes, they're coming through uh, this tight section, which will be eradicated by those changes. Just to, uh, to just to talk about a little bit more about the city of Detroit as well. It's been a, an amazing weekend here for them. The Detroit Red Wings, the ice hockey team, winning the Stanley Cup last night, which is uh, about the biggest thing that an ice hockey team can possibly win. The whole city was alive last night. The streets were just just full of people at sort of midnight and well into the early hours of this morning. And so uh, a lot of fans have come along to the race here. A bit bleary-eyed, perhaps, a few hangovers amongst them, but it's an absolutely fabulous day on the Belle Isle Park, and the scene is set for a very, very exciting race this afternoon. Gilles de Ferran leads the 27 cars around then on the warm-up lap. 77 lap race this will be, and as you can see, the pit window between 25 and 28, but watch out to see what they do exactly. It is even possible on the fuel to make just one stop on this track, as the teams were telling me, if you run carefully on fuel. But it's highly unlikely because of the tyre wear situation and the fact that the tyre pickup is bad here as well. If you run offline, there's a lot of little bits of rubber on the, the track, and that's going to make the car handle very badly. They're beginning to build up a bit of speed now. We're coming around to take the green flag as they get to the start-finish line. They've got to get themselves into order here, and that's exactly what Gilles de Ferran's doing. In the wet last year, we had a single file start for safety purposes. It's dry this year, green flag, two abreast. Here we go, Gilles de Ferran leading up the line across into turn one, has the line ahead of Scott Breed and Roberto Moreno. It's in and there behind, Alex Zanardi gets sideways across the middle of the back. Yeah, there are problems for Zanardi straight away. He made contact with somebody, and it's difficult to see how they've all ended up. We could see that out of our commentary box window as they went into the first corner. That is Zanardi's nose cone that you can see lying in the middle of the road, and already the Italian is in trouble. Dario Franchini, I think, survived that. He was in the middle. There is Franchini just going through picture. There's a gap, and that gap has been formed by the accident that happened to Zanardi. Now, let's just see if we can uh, spot where he is. You can see, just going through the picture, his teammate, Jimmy Vassar, but uh, of Zanardi, well, let's take a look at the replay. De Ferran comes through, Pruitt comes through. Zanardi just locking up and then a few other little problems going on behind them. And then coming through and absolute problems as well for Fernandez, who's off into the tyre barrier. So Adrian Fernandez, we've got a full course yellow and already we have dramas aplenty in the start of this race. Troubles for Alex Zanardi, troubles for Adrian Fernandez, who's had a terrible weekend here already. And it's just got even worse because his race has come to an end against the tyre barrier. So, Jeremy, dramatic opening uh, moments. Let's take another look here. Look at third, fourth. Yes, fourth actually hit by Dario Franchitti. So Zanardi got collected by Franchitti and then swiped the nose off, and then Zanardi was able to rejoin, but that was what caused the problem as they all tried to squeeze into the funnel of turn one. It is tight, it's difficult corner. It's a little bit like the first corner at the Nürburgring, with it going right and then left, and often we see troubles there, and it's exactly what we've seen here today. So, the first yellow flag period of the race. Bellal Park, and Alex Zanardi is out of the race. He's got out of his car, and a huge disappointment for the Italian. Starting on the second row of the grid, contact I with Alex know, Zanardi. I don't even know who hit me, but uh, it's, uh, it's not simply disappointing. It's sort of desperation when you're out of the race. We're watching the replay here as we come through, and it looked as if, as we take a look one more time from high above, Dario Franchitti gets you sideways. I mean, it's it's bad when, you know, when when you're out of the race for somebody else's fault, and it's uh, it's uh, very bad because we are going for this championship, and uh, it's understandable that people is trying to win races, but uh, you know. First corner counts like the, like the last. I won a race last year at the last corner, and I cannot blame somebody for trying to make a position in the first one. But really, today we go out from this event with our tail in, in, in the middle of our legs. So I'm pretty desperate right now.
bad. So uh, Alex Donardi very disappointed there, obviously, to be out of the race so early on. The contact with Dario Franchitti was all a bit fraught getting into that first corner, and uh, it looked almost as though Donardi had to slow down a little bit as... Uh, Perhaps it was Moreno just ahead of him, had to slow down a bit, and Frank Giddy trying to sort of squeeze down the inside. I don't think he really meant to try and get past Zanardi. Zanardi had to turn into the corner, and the yeah, left suspension damage there on the right front.